Hey everyone, welcome back to some more Python programming videos and tutorials. We've been looking at the PXSSH module. Uh, we've been using that to kind of connect to servers, send different commands, all through SSH, and that's been pretty cool. So I want to show you a little bit more that you can do with this library uh, and then with this with this object here that we've created with it. So there are another option that I there is another option that I kind of want to show off to you, or another attribute and property part of the object. And of course, there is some kind of a, a cool interaction, interactive thing that pretty much puts you at an SSH terminal, which uh, would probably be pretty convenient if that's what you want to have. So I'll go ahead and log in for us, and that works just fine. What I want to show you guys is an interesting thing called SSH ops. So s dot SSH underscore ops for SSH options, and you'll notice that, okay, there are certain options that you're passing to the SSH program that you actually run when you run SSH. So, this is talking about RSA authentication and the public key authentication. Now, both of these are set to no. Now, it's interesting because if you actually try and SSH to something uh, from your command line, from your actual shell, like if I wanted to connect to bandit0 at bandit.labs. You know, over the wire.org. The same thing that we've been doing throughout this entire video series. If I connect to it, okay, it allows me to connect just fine. But if it were a server that I had never connected to before, SSH is going to kind of perk its ears up and say, oh, hang on, this server has an RSA, RSA key. Is it a public key that we know? Have we seen it before? Can we trust this host? Can we trust this server? So it'll ask you that. And uh, here, I'll show you how it works behind the scenes. Uh, I'll actually show you uh, Krypton 1, because I know I haven't connected this before. Krypton at labs uh, over the wire.org. Now it'll ask me, hey, uh, authenticity can't be established. Here's kind of an RSA fingerprint, or at least a key. Do you want to continue connecting? And I'll say no. So that's what SSH does if you connect to a server that you haven't seen before. That's what SSH normally does. You can supply these arguments and these options that say, oh, we don't really have to worry about the authentication, about the key, or any of that stuff. So if I try to do that from PXSSH, if I try to go to Krypton, Krypton1, and I just happen to know the password is Krypton is great capital letters. I run this. Oh, yeah, I got a reset PID. Sorry. Now, if I run this, okay, cool. We log in just fine. But it didn't ask me, was my RSA, was my, was this key valid? Do I trust this? So, I want to bring this to your attention because PXSSH, with those options that it has, SSH ops, by default, it'll put that server that you don't know yet in your SSH known hosts thing. So if I go back to this here, okay, it's going to ask me this question again. Because it, it hasn't been stored in my known hosts. Okay, I guess I'm jumping to conclusions here. PXSSH in Python, the module won't store it in your known hosts. It'll just go ahead and connect to it without any authentication and verifying do you want to do this. If you say yes, then it adds it to the list of known hosts from the shell, from normal SSH execution. So that's the difference that I wanted to show you, and just kind of bringing to your attention this SSH ops variable. By default, it doesn't worry about authentication, but you can change this variable, and you can probably even add more options to it, and then just um, connect to your server afterwards. Okay. So that's enough talk about the SSA op or options. That was really all that I wanted to show you, and hopefully you guys understand that uh, it won't store the authentication key with PXSSH. It'll ask you if you want to do it with normal SSH execution without those uh, options specified. But you can, of course, change those in PXSSH. Okay, now the other function that I want to show off was interact. Now, in idle, this is going to freak out. <laughs> That's what it will tell you that, okay, it's an inappropriate input and output controller for this device. 
because it's not obviously a terminal you can echo in and out of in idle. But what that function would do, here I'll show you, it gives control of the child process to the interactive user, or the human at the keyboard, you yourself. Keystrokes are sent to the child process, and the standard output and standard error of the program are printed. This pretty much just echoes the child standard output and standard output to real output, and does the same thing to uh, standard input and output. Uh, there might be a little bit more of that, and I know that description was cut off, so you can look at it in the help file. So you've got different uh, escape characters that you can allow, filters that you can set up. Uh, why that original and default escape character is set. So you can modify it to whatever you need to. And I wanted to show you that, okay, in idle it doesn't work, but in Python, the shell inside of a, a console or a terminal obviously will. Because that's pretty much what it is. A secure shell running inside a shell. So if I import pxsnh, if I set it all up, s.login, throw in our server name, get us logged in pretty okay. Hopefully return true, be able to connect without a problem. Now if I run interact, echo hello. And now you'll see a little bit more of the behind the scenes as to how um, PXSH SSH sorry actually works. You can see our prompt that we would normally see. And uh, anything that we else anything else that we do here like LS the command output is going to be given and input is passed in like everything else but it's pretty much just an SSH shell <laughs> and uh, you can just type in the commands here but of course you're not automating things in this way you're at the interactive shell so it pretty much just works like SSH would if you were to run it from the command line kind of takes away from what you would have wanted with doing it in Python but I wanted to show you that you did have that functionality. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Um, I think that's all I wanted to demonstrate in this video. I hope it was pretty okay for you. hope you liked it, and uh, hope you were able to tolerate how bad I am at all this stuff. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you in the next tutorial.